is up, this is Troek, and welcome to another episode of Greenlight It, a little opinion video I do where I sift through the crap of Steam Greenlight and show you a game that's worth your upvote. The game we're going to be looking at today is Broforce, which is a bullet hell platformer similar into the style of Contra and Metal Slug of old. The story overall puts you in a race for revenge and bromance that spans the continents and outer space, which pretty much means there's going to be a hell of a lot of different locations and probably some very different environmental hazards, things like lava, possibly water, you know, you could have sequences where you're on a boat chasing after somebody and if you get knocked off the boat by any way, shape or form, you fall into the water and sharks kill you. Just an option, but it's there. Also being out of space, they could have low gravity, they could have no gravity, and they could also have the idea of being able to put uh, pressure into the game, where if you get a tear in your suit or, you know, something happens like that, you depressurize and you explode. They're going to have local and online co-op with uh, deathmatch arenas, which I think is really, really good. One of the things I, f I feel for a lot of platformers that have come out as of late, um, when they say they have multiplayer, it's usually only local, which isn't a bad thing. But on PC, I don't think it's really worth having. It's much better to have online co-op, mostly because like games like Trine, where I've wanted to play with friends, but we've either been too busy to do so, or uh, you know we're too far away to do so. You know I do have friends in other states, and it's you know it's a good drive to get up here. You know, eight hours in some cases. So you're gonna want to you know just play online. You not want to play local. So having an online co-op and of course deathmatch arenas, you know things like that that are online based. They're always going to be fun. Of course, you are going to have, with the Deathmatch Arena, there's a little bit of competitiveness to it. You've got leaderboards and that sort of stuff, so they're adding in that extra little spice for others who maybe don't want to play the single player at all and just want to go about killing each other. The game at the beginning states that it's best played with a controller, and I have to fully agree with that. Just, just the feel of the controller just feels better for these type of platformers over keyboard and mouse I feel or just keyboard in this case you can play with just the keyboard I didn't really find much of an issue but it just felt better with a controller they're stating that they're gonna have assorted vehicles multiple enemies uh, for example dinosaurs and aliens the dinosaurs possibly could become vehicles which would be cool and contra inspired bosses now if you're anything like me and you love a good boss battle you know that's why you love contra that's why you love metal slug is for the boss battles because they're just so memorable these boss battles are going to be really really fun and it's going to be just something that is going to be you're going to want to do it over and over and over again just because it's fun it's silly it's over the top it's just run in and kill everything and of course being that they are using the satire of 80s and 90s action heroes, they could bring in 80s and 90s villains, or some of the more iconic villains. Uh, a perfect example could be they've got a, a character in there that is a rendition of uh, John McClane. They could bring Hans Gruber in. You know, call him Bruger or something, you know. Bro Gruber or something. Who knows? That would, I think, would be really <laughs> awesome if you could do that. But, of course, there are others. They've got um, what looks like to be a... Uh, I can't remember the character's name, but a, the Arnold Schwarzenegger character from Predator. So they could bring in... They've said characters from outer space, and they're going to have aliens. Could they bring in a alien or Predator-style character? You've obviously got Rambo. Could they bring in... I don't know... Maybe some of the more iconic Korean characters and, and stuff like that they've brought in. Or maybe even ones from the newest Rambo. And, you know, further on forward, they've got Blade, so maybe they're going to bring vampires in. They've got MacGyver. Maybe they're going to bring in some of the characters from MacGyver. But they could span it to anything. So that would be really great to see some of the 
iconic bosses of the 90s and or iconic enemies I should say of the 90s and 80s coming in and being the bosses or being very influential components to uh, this game they're bringing in a level editor which I think is extremely important for these type of games uh, I know that there are designers out there especially level designers who are sadistic to say the least and try to make the hardest level that can possibly be out there and I love that because that's the whole reason why I play these games is because they are so difficult and when you do beat them it is so satisfying so level editor and being able to share levels and everything else you could make easy levels for people who don't want to uh, have too much of a problem. You could make levels that are almost impossible. You could even make levels maybe similar to, or even a line of levels, similar to that of what's done with Shadow of the Colossus, is that they're nothing but a boss battle. You just have to get through a whole heap of obstacles and things like that till finally you get to a boss. That, that I would, wouldn't mind playing a game like that as well. The graphics, in my opinion, are awesome. They have this 2D, pixelated, Saturday morning cartoon feel to them. You know, I, I every time I look at them, I really feel like I get transported back to, you know, not age of 9 and 10 on a Saturday morning at 6 o'clock, just waking up, sitting myself in front of the TV, and just watching every single cartoon that comes on, not caring what it was, you know... Uh, watching the Transformers, watching uh, Robotech, watching G.I. Joe, and just going, this is awesome, I want this life, I want to be that guy, or I want to be Optimus Prime, or I want to be Rick Hunter. But they have stated that they are changing the graphics to something better. Now, they haven't shown it, so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say it will be better. But the thing is, I'm a little apprehensive to let go of these graphics because I do like them so much. So maybe if this game hits off well, maybe they can bring it back in a DLC or add in a filter later on just so they can bring back these graphics because I think they're just awesome. I, I really feel that this the graphics do... They do so well for the game and the way the game is played and the satire that the game has being, you know, they are taking heroes from 80s and 90s, you know, the 80s and 90s action heroes, really, and um, just putting them out there and going, hey, we're just putting you in a bullet hell match. Go ahead, go nuts. So I really would like to see these graphics maybe make a return in some form of filter, in some form of DLC, maybe. I'd even pay for it, so I wouldn't have a problem. But... You know, I would like to also see the new graphics and, and see how they look. But I would like to at least have the choice anyway. I feel like the level design does need work. Uh, granted, they have stated that this is a very early alpha concept, so this does not represent in any way, shape, or form the end product. But I feel definitely the level design was not made with certain bros or certain characters in mind. Example, the um, Blade and MacGyver ones. A lot of times I'd start off with them and I would just be instantly hammered or I would instantly be sought out, uh, found out and I couldn't get behind them to slice them up with the sword if I was playing the Blade character. And of course MacGyver only having the TNT... He can't throw them as well as a grenade. They don't bounce, so he has to be extremely uh, precise in where they put them. Which was another problem, because if you're not precise with them, and you blow up, say, a certain hole in the wall, in the floor, or something like that, or a bridge, and the hole is too large, or the gap is too large, you can't get anywhere else. You're going to have to try and find another way, if there is another way. So, I, I feel level design can easily be put up, but again, it is a extremely alpha build, so I'm, I'm quite sure they're going to change it, but I would like to see newer levels maybe come in, even in images, just, just so we can go, hey, the level design does look a lot better from what you have shown before. And a final point is that AI, I feel, is just too rudimentary. It's got two states in it. One, I'm patrolling. Two, I'm alert. And then they just stay alert. 
And again, this comes back to only certain bros having a bit of a problem, but all of them I feel like having the problem, especially the Blade and the MacGyver one, where they don't have guns. You know, they throw TNT or they have a sword, so they need to get closer than the others. So they can kind of, you know, stay away, they have to get closer to do anything. And if the person is alert and they're undercover, and you're a Blade, and you've got no way of getting behind them, you're kind of screwed, and if it's the only way to go through, it's the only way to go through. Kind of sucks. Like I said, I would like to maybe see that this comes into design of the levels as well, but I would also like to see the AI maybe gain a few more Metal Gear esque sort of uh, design properties or design ideas where if they can't see you for a certain amount of time, they start going back to patrolling. Um, a perfect example, for example, you could take the really big heavy guys with the machine guns, they could have the shortest attention span, they burst a couple of times and they go, eh, okay, walk back into my uh, patrol scene and I'm just walking around. The standard soldiers with the machine guns could probably go, hmm, you know, they fight, they, they stay for a little longer and they go, hmm, I don't know, maybe I might go check out the area just in case, make sure that no one's around and then I'll go back to patrolling. And of course, finally, the uh, kamikaze guys, well, they're just going to run at you until they blow up, so let them do that. But yeah, more involvement in the AI would definitely be a thing I'd like to see. But again, this is also a very early alpha build of the demo, of the game in general, I should say. It's just, I really would like to see more about that, so... It's definitely a game I feel just out of its pure fun factor and out of its just the satire of the 80s and 90s, you know, taking some of these iconic characters and just putting them in a bullet hell platformer, hopefully putting them up against uh, their well-known enemies as the bosses and, of course, just having fun playing with friends in co-op or playing against friends in deathmatch arenas. And herein is another episode of uh, Green Light It. If you think I'm a raving lunatic and you want to say so, by all means put something in the comments. And if you want to continue on with the conversation about the points I've put up or bring up points of your own, of course, please put them in the comments. And I'll catch you on the next video, guys. See ya!